Welcome to the Kingdom. I'm Chris, and this is Good Enough Gaming. Howdy folks, and welcome to this video where we're going to be painting a Highland Miniatures Dwarf Berserker, but we're going to be doing a different approach than my previous videos we're gonna look at three different stages of painting. So we're gonna start with a basic tabletop standard, which just means coloring in all of the major features on it. So there's none of that black primer showing through. Now, while I'm going through and you're watching me put the skin coat on, it's the biggest uh, color on the whole model. So we'll start with that. Now, I've never won a major painting competition. I'm not considered a pro or an expert like the ones you might find on some of those YouTube videos where you have Golden Demon winners and Crystal Brush winners, but I've been painting a very, very long time. And I've found what I think works for different stages of painting, good, better, and best. And I think one reason people might get hung up on painting, might not like it, might end up with a big pile of shame, is because they're trying to paint everything either to a standard that requires way too much time, at least for them, or to a standard that might even be beyond their ability to paint it. So what I wanted to do here was to show you what I consider my three basic stages of painting. You can get an idea about how long it takes to do each one. And you might notice that even the most basic tabletop one can still look very nice, doesn't take very long. And if you want, you can always come back and add to it, go to the next level of painting. But this might help those of you who are hesitant to approach the painting for one reason or another. So now that we're looking here, you can see um, it's just about coverage. Don't worry if this first color gets all over the place because we're gonna be painting over top of it. And once it dries, you definitely need a second coat as this flesh tone, it's not gonna cover everything the first time. The next major item on this model that we wanna paint up is that big cloth or piece that's going around his waist there. Again, we're not going to highlight it, we're not going to shade it, we're just going to color it. And it still might not look great because you got a lot of that primer showing through, but believe it or not, once we get all of the major elements of the model with some kind of color on them, it actually looks pretty good. Now let's get the third major piece of this model and that's his hair and his beard. And here's where you have to start being a little bit more careful because you're painting close to an already painted area, such as his forehead, his facial features, the chest underneath. So here's where you have to start being a little bit more careful. The paint job might slow down a little bit, but we're still just going for basic color coverage. So it shouldn't take that long. And if you make any mistakes, it's really easy to cover because you're still just using one single color on each of these features. In my other videos, we've painted a blonde, we've painted a black haired. So let's give this guy a nice, deep, rusty brown. So believe it or not, we're almost done, at least getting this guy to a tabletop standard. So grab your favorite metallic silver or gunmetal and go after those two axes he's got in each hand. And while I'm finishing up with the axes here, let me make another suggestion to help make a painting experience a little bit more enjoyable. Have something on in the background. Watch a movie, listen to some music, listen to an audio book. You don't wanna to listen to a music where you're having to constantly change it out. That could get irritating. But if you start making the painting just what you're doing while you're actually doing something else, you might actually look forward to it. I know if I find a really good book on tape, if I find a really good series on Netflix or Amazon or something like that that I really want to watch, I'm suddenly more motivated to paint because the painting is just what I'm doing to keep my hands busy while I listen to or watch the film. So if you don't like painting, maybe it's because that's all you're focused on and it does take time. and. Maybe that's what's making you not like it so much. Find something else to do or something to enjoy while you're painting, and I think you'll find it's a lot more interesting, engaging, and enjoyable. Just getting down to the last few details here. So first we'll do the belt. Grab your favorite basic leather color, a dark brown, reddish brown, yellowish brown, whatever you want it to be. 
give the belt around the waist, make sure you get that pouch in front there, and it's done. These pieces are starting to go really quick because we've already got the major stuff like the skin, the cloth, and the beard taken care of. So just a few swipes with that uh, paintbrush, and these details are finished. Great example here of a detail that's very small, but if you don't do it, it'll stick out like a sore thumb. And that's this little bit of cloth that he's got tucked in his, uh, his belt here. So in this case, I decided to paint it a gray. You could also use like a beige. I wouldn't do a brown just because his beard is already brown here, but something to make it stick out so people will notice it. It's time to start doing the jewelry, the bracelets that he's got around his ankles and his hands. And for this, I like to use Retributor Armor because it's got really good coverage. It's a very strong pigment, so even over top of a black primer, it tends to cover with one, maybe two coats. If you have a different gold, something shinier that you like to use that doesn't have a strong pigment to it, you'd probably have to start off with painting a layer of a brown or a yellow underneath, something that matches the color of the gold you want to use, but just doesn't have the sparkle to it. So that's the one case here where you might have to do layer upon layer of a different color to get the effect that you want. Now, as I was twisting and turning the model to make sure I got all the gold, I noticed two details, very tiny ones that I missed. So one is the buckle on his belt here. So I just grabbed a quick dab of uh, lead belcher to tidy that up. And then there's also a rope underneath that you can see just in front of the, the, the cloth that he's wearing. So get your favorite uh, khaki, uh, beige color, something like that. Put a quick stripe on it to color up the rope. So there's a tabletop ready model. It took about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, you could add a wash to the skin, the cloth, and the beard to give it a little bit of depth. But since this whole army of mine, I'm trying to do no wash just to see how it looks. But from three feet away on a tabletop, this is fine. So you could stick with this and be done or we could move on to adding some highlights. The thing that separates good from better is shade and highlight, adding depth to the model, you know, putting shadows and light shining off it where the model doesn't naturally have it. So the first place we're gonna do that is we're gonna add a wash to the, the, the axis. This is the one place, well, two places that I'll actually use a wash and the null oil takes a while to dry. So we're going to put it on there and let it dry while we focus on some of the other areas of the model. So now we're going to add some shadow to the cloth. Now you could, if you wanted, just dip the brush in the wash and paint over all of the cloth. That will still give you roughly the same effect. It'll darken down all the cloth, but the, the, the wash will pool in the recesses a lot more and give a darker appearance. But again, because this model is joining an army of mine that uh, I didn't use that kind of wash technique over everything, here I'm just gonna do again what I call that pinpoint or that detailed wash, where you wanna put it anywhere where there's gonna be shadow. So under there um, to separate the gray cloth from the, uh, the blue add it to the really deep recesses and then maybe one little bit here on this piece because the fabric kind of bends in but not a lot so there's not a lot to put on this guy but either way you want to do it will work okay so the skin and the beard are what make a model like this berserker because that's the majority of what you see now if you decided earlier on to put a wash over top of the muscle to give it a little more detail that way what you'd want to do for this step first is take your original base flesh color and paint it where you see me painting it here. That'll bring the raised areas of the skin up to the original flesh tone, leaving the wash in the recesses to keep it dark and shadowy. Then you'd go back with a second layer, putting in the lighter flesh tone. In this case, since I didn't use a wash and I'm just highlighting up from the original flesh tone, I'll put on this layer of uh, um, Cadian flesh tone here. We'll have to go back and do two coats because as you can see, as it dries, it shows through a lot of that Bugman's glow underneath and it looks kind of splotchy and messy. All you need is another thin layer of coat of paint and it'll bring everything together. Now in the case of this model, this is where you want to spend the majority of your time. This is the majority of the model here. So follow the musculature, be very careful, be very precise, 
If you make a mistake, you can knead it up, but every model will have one element that really sticks out. Like for a Space Marine, it's the armor because it covers 90% of it. In the case of this Dwarf Berserker, it's the skin. So if everything else doesn't look great, the skin looking good can compensate for all of that. The skin and maybe the beard. Everything else will just kind of blend in. So take your time on the parts of the model that are exposed the most to the eye, and then it'll look great when it's finished. With the skin out of the way, we turn to the next most important thing on this model, and that's the beard. Now here I did a bit of an experiment. It worked okay. Um, I decided to do a little mid-tone brown, slightly lighter than the base one, and then I was going to highlight with an even brighter brown on top. When I was done, the difference was pretty darn subtle. As you can see on the model here, you almost can't see where I'm putting it on. Um, it pops a little bit more when I get to the hair, just because those edges are really, really raised. So I think in hindsight, I probably would have just gone straight with that highest level, the really brightest brown to make the, uh, the individual hair strands stick out, and then gone back with an even lighter brown color just at the very tips of the hair and at the very edges of where it bends or something like that to really, really make it stick out. But uh, the whole point here of the, the better version is one layer of highlight and then the best version adds that one more layer of edge highlighting on top. So you can see here the hair, you can, you can see the difference a little bit better. But uh, in hindsight, I'm not sure if this gave me the exact effect I wanted, although it did create a very, very nice but subtle blend from that deeper brown to the eventual highest one. Everything gets highlighted, even that tiny little piece of cloth that's sticking in uh, his belt loop there. So just grab a brighter gray than the one you previously used and just kind of, for this case, I stippled it because I want it to look like very, very rough fur. So around the edges, stipple in the middle, make it stick out a little bit. Um, and you can see it gives it a lot more depth. Our next highlight is going to be on the leather. In this case, he just has that one leather belt. And to make him uh, match the rest of my army, I got to use Doom Bull, Bull Brown. But for you, just use a lighter color of whatever your base leather was. If you paint just along the very tip there and let the rest of the belt stay that previous color, it gives this nice fading transition to it. adding these highlights I just occurred to me I never painted the guy's eyebrows so he's got skin colored eyebrows so I went back got my original brown two little quick stripes over across his eyebrows and suddenly his face looks more like a face so skin and hair are what really make the big difference here so let's move on to our last stage of painting All right, so I did a rookie thing and made a new mistake. I thought the camera was off and I was turning it on. Instead, it was on and I turned it off and then proceeded to do all the final stage of painting. But the good news is I can still show you everything that I did here. So first, notice the cloth. I added a lighter highlight of blue on the most raised edges of the cloth. Then on the muscle, I added a slightly uh, lighter shade of flesh to the very edges of each muscle itself where the light would hit. I added a slightly lighter brown on the beard at the tips of the hair or where the hair would bulge out a little bit. And I also did the eyes. Now normally I hate doing eyes, but that is something you want to do if you're really trying to do a super nice detailed model. So 20 minutes to an hour per model depending on your level of detail. And whichever one you pick, it's good enough. <laughs> 